The Trans Labrador Highway was one of the most remote roads in North America. In 1992, when Phase 1 from Lab City to Happy Valley Goose Bay was opened, it could hardly be called a highway. It was more like a logging road. Phase 2 from Red Bay to Cartwright was completed in 2002, and then the final phase from Happy Valley Goose Bay to Cartwright Junction was opened in 2011. The road now spans 1,185 kilometers from Lansing Clare in the south to Lab City in the west. Over half the highway is now paved, but riders still have over 500 kilometers of gravel to contend with between Happy Valley Goose Bay and Red Bay. Construction, road graders, blinding dust, and ever-changing road conditions can lead to accidents. To make matters worse, emergency services can be hours away because of the vast distances between communities and the lack of cell phone reception. Despite the new pavement, you still have to deal with traveling through hours of wilderness and the harsh, unpredictable Labrador weather. This was Cartwright Junction mid-September, just after we returned home. Making a trip to Labrador is still an adventure. So it's uh, 10 o'clock in the morning, almost 10 o'clock in the morning. We got a late start this morning. I had, uh, yeah, yesterday was a long day and uh, I had uh, three too many beer last night with my cousin at his place while uh, Pete and Oliver got a good night's sleep. So this morning is, uh, we're gonna ride around Goose Bay, around the base, head down Northwest River, Sheshashi, and then uh, trip to trip to Falls. 80 kilometers from here, and from the last reports, about 80 kilometers of gravel on that, and then the road from Church of the Goose Bay, or Church of the Wabush is all paved. So, just getting everything tightened up, re glued, re greased, make a big push. She was a little dirty on the road yesterday, a lot of dust, and we got a lot of rain, everything's filthy. And then when we got close to Goose Bay, we ran into the mud. Damn. That's some of the big land on my big bike. Good for the kids, eh? Kids like the dogs. What's that? What's that? What is that? Good boy. What's yourself? I'm Jimmy. I'm up in Goose Bay. I've been here for about two years. At least another year left. Awesome. Got my toys and all that to keep me entertained. Which it's like uh, MTV Cribs. Look at that. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Here, here's my spot. Yeah. So explain how you and Terry connected. Oh, basically uh, on ADV Rider, I believe he was uh, post up a thread about his adventures up to uh, Goose yeah. Bay. Jimmy was kind enough to invite us over. So yeah, come awesome. over. And he's got the coolest toy bin. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna go look at that yeah. in a second. I got a few in storage too. There, my winter toys in storage. <laughs> My O2 KTM just for adventure. Sweet. You have to speak up just a bit with the tunes, or yeah. just turn down, yeah. Yeah, it's my uh, gas gas. I bought in Nova Scotia before I came here. I wanted to do hair scrambles, street plated and everything, but I don't ride it much up here. I got my other KTM for longer hauls. And this new KTM here, that's for my longer haul on road and adventures. Wow. Used to be my other one, but now this is my main rig. <laughs> More trustworthy. Used to be my other one, now it's the main rig. Yeah. <laughs> Look at this bad boy. It's a 2012 OSA fuel injection two stroke. She weighs 64 kilograms all together. <laughs> that thing's awesome. I, I remember reading a test on that thing. Holy yeah. hell. In uh, Dirt Bike Magazine. I'm like, hey. okay, I gotta get one. Oh, yeah. oh yeah, I could probably lift it up for the drive. Magnesium fuel tank's part of the uh, frame, right? Yeah. This is the only frame after these two tubes. The, wow. Uh, exhaust is carbon fiber, it's subframe as well. Yeah, the cylinder points that one. 
Yeah, so and everything's cool. like shorter too. You got your intake coming out the front and your exhaust going out the back. No wrapping around of nothing. Wow. It's direct injection, right? Yeah. Jimmy is from Quebec and is in the Canadian Forces where he is a maintenance engineer responsible for keeping the search and rescue helicopters in the air. Jimmy likes riding in the dirt, so much so that he prefers the ditch to the road. Here he is taking us up to Dome Mountain for a better look at the Goose Bay area. See a little uh, steel bridge down there, it's phase three. That's where we crossed yesterday, right? Yeah, going yeah. down to the south coast. Cool. And the Translab Highway is on this north side of that river. Going into Goose Bay, about 30 kilometers from the bridge. You got the airport with what you see in the foreground. Yeah. Background's a town. All the way up to the point over there. On the other side, you got Mud Lake. A few people live down there. Oh, yeah. Uh, burnt over last summer, I think. Or the summer before. Let's find an old Coke can and stuff like that that you had. So this is, uh, pick up my uh, work glasses. So we're at the uh, Goose Bay base. And these are just some historic airplanes that they have uh, set up. And uh, Jimmy's just showing us around. You can hear a plane taking off in the background. I think it's a lab air. Some commercial uh, operations that come out of here now. Goose Bay was built by the U.S. military in the 1940s to accommodate the large numbers of aircraft headed to Europe for the war effort. And in 1953, it was transferred to Canada and is still a Canadian Forces base to this day. It was a major training center for the British, Dutch, and Italian Air Forces during the 1980s and 1990s. I lived here in the early 90s when I first began my flying career and worked with Air Labrador. had to leave for work so we said goodbye at Otter Creek and made our way to Northwest River. So inspired by Jimmy's love of off-road riding, he decided to go for a rip up the Northwest River Beach. Realizing that we were now out of bear spray when he saw this little fella, he discovered how fast the old KLR could really go. Here we are outside the uh, Labrador Mini Mart. Let's see if we can get it in. There it is. In uh, North River. And I guess there's a there's an Indian reservation very close called Sushishi. I don't know if we're going to stop in. But um, our next stop will be out to, uh, can't remember where we're going next. Anyway, Terry knows. But at one time they used to take a, a trolley across the river here prior to there being a bridge. I guess there you can see it.
We left Northwest River and headed back to Goose Bay for gas before continuing on the 286 kilometers to Churchill Falls. We also stopped at Muskrat Falls about 20 kilometers outside of Goose Bay. We're hiking our way down to Muskrat Falls. Holy crap! Morgan pose. So kids, this is what can happen if you screw around with matches. If you look around here, this was a big forest fire. And the road was closed for a while this summer. Um, but you can see it everywhere behind us, over here. I'll take a little walk in. But, as you see, with everything that happens, there's always new growth from the ashes. The forest fires were so bad this year that earlier in the summer, the road between Goose Bay, Churchill Falls, and Walbush was closed. Two other riders, Jay West, and I hope I pronounced this right, K. Hung Law, were stuck in Churchill Falls for two days before they could leave for Lab City. This is the Trans Lab for the Hurley Riders. Over. Easy, easy. The fun part's over, I guess. Yeah. And, uh, it's only fun when you finally get it. It is a beautiful, sunny day. What are we doing today, Oxley? Look at him, getting the hair done. I gotta get it so I can fit it in my uh, helmet. You need a bigger helmet. Oh. This big line thing's getting in your head, man. Uh, today is a short run to Wabash. Wabash Lab City. Yes, sir. 224 kilometers. Probably knowing our, the way we've been going, we can somehow make that, if we leave here at 9, we can somehow arrive there at 5. <laughs> yeah, or, or later, yeah. yeah. Or later, yeah. Chasing it so the sun's not coming down. So. Anyway, it'd be cool. I think it's all, uh, it's all highways. It's all, it's all paved now. Yeah. The easy part. In the parking lot of the hotel, we met a young couple from British Columbia on a trip of a lifetime. Just when you start to think you're a big, studly adventurer, you meet some people who once again humble you. Ashik and Alec quit their boring jobs and are touring North America for over a year. While I'm freezing my arse off at home this winter, they'll be in the warm Mexican sun. What's around the uh, ride here? This is sweet. Oh, for sure. Wow. Uh, so. We decided not to get a winch, mainly because, like, that's how you get stuck. Is, uh, you, <laughs> you rely on it? Yeah. <laughs> what year is it? Uh, 87. 87. Uh, but it's on its third engine. It's got a four-banger diesel in it, so. Yeah. But navigations with uh, Gaia um, and like, a little handheld GPS thing. Okay. Um, wow. <laughs> you guys are fridge, freezer. Get lots of fish. Yeah. Um, Have you been you've been fishing? No, we haven't. But oh. uh, you just step off on the dock and ask people for fish and if they want to sell it or whatnot, and they just kind of hand, hand you a char. Yeah, they, they hand you like a bag full of. of yeah, Terry used to fly up here, and he said he'd, he'd oh, yeah. always land, and people would be bringing him like caribou and yeah. char and oh yeah, everything. Yeah. Yeah, lots yeah. of it. Whoa. So yeah, just extra food and whatnot. Yes. And the backs mainly just storage and kitchen. <laughs> Holy crap. Thing is awesome. So have you guys been camping much? Yeah, yeah. So the rooftop tent kind of opens up, and we've been sleeping up there. Oh, okay. Um, this propane stove, this folds down, that comes out. There's a little cutting board on it. Uh, 
with 60 liters of water on board. Um, yeah, it's, it's actually been pretty comfortable living. Um, like that. Not too many mechanicals yeah. so far. You can handle them though? Yeah, we've got enough spares. We've got, you know, busted U joints, yeah. brake pads, kind of stuff rattling loose. And yeah. Be re so is everything pretty user friendly? I guess if you know the truck, the vehicle? Yeah, there's no electronics in it, right? So okay. It's yeah. just, you know, the only thing that worries me is if the fuel pump goes. Yeah. That's, you then know, a couple grand and yeah, you're hooped. Yeah. Uh, but apart from that, that's the only. Snorkel on it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's cool. More for dust than waiting. Yeah, sure. Um, we got a canoe. Okay, cool. Uh, that's we haven't really used that too much. Um, only on a couple trips so far. But, so what's uh, the uh, when are you gonna be back in BC? Probably not till next summer. Wow. Um, we're once the weather turns here and it seems to be, we're just gonna head down to like Utah, Moab, that sort of thing, and then down to Mexico and do the Baja. Good for you. Um, and just kind of, just kind of, you know, wait till the weather clears up and then. Work How long have you back. been planning this trip? Uh, about a year and a half. Cool. Something like that. Yeah. That's awesome. Just decided to, to just do it. After saying goodbye to Alec and Ashik, I went to warm up my bike and immediately noticed my clutch did not engage. My first thought was, shit, it's the start of the Labor Day weekend and I'm in the middle of Labrador. I'm picturing CAA hanging up on me once I tell them where I am. I figured out my hydraulic fluid was slowly leaking, so Pete ran out to get some at the gas station. We then topped it off and away we went, hoping I could limp the bike home the remaining 1,474 kilometers. But, between the power of the internet and the power of the internet, we get this. Where are we? We are along the Churchill Falls River, about 20 kilometers from the town of Churchill Falls. On the Boyden, Bowden, Bowden? The entrance to the trail, yes. Bowden? 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 Bowden, Bowden Canyon. Nature. Anyway, we're going to go see what... Where spots may be slippery. There yeah. you go. Let's and see it. And at your own risk. Let's go do it. Here we are. Alright, so there's the channel, I guess, and there's the falls. We will see a much better view of it shortly. And there's the photographers. Alright, so here's the survivor man shot. We're going on the unsanctioned trail to see the Churchill Falls. Just up ahead here, I believe. Oh yeah. Yeah, come here! It's good! Yeah, you can see the whole thing! Well worth the hike, I'll turn it around. So that's the mighty Churchill. So that was full of water at one time. It's probably a shitload still, but if you can imagine the water spanning that entire cataract, it's big falls. Wow, that's a better view. We made our way to Wabush on the smooth new asphalt highway. I was a little stressed about my clutch leak to stop from time to time to keep checking it, which slowed our progress, but eventually we made it by mid-afternoon. The fatigue of riding long days for eight days in a row was starting to show. <laughs> 